Well, hello, everybody. Uh, I think we all know that CES was back with a vengeance this year. Over 100,000 visitors came to Las Vegas and many more people uh, read the news and streamed the live streams um, and really just kind of gobbled up and uh, consumed all the new ideas and the electronics and the technology that was taking place. In this special video, I wanted to interview some members of our community and understand what their takeaways were, especially for marketers, brand executives, retailers and beyond, and to see where, what we can do with this technology and where it's going to lead us in 2023 and beyond. So let's talk to Phil Sage. Phil, you're part of the design innovation team at PepsiCo. Um, what brings PepsiCo and yourself to the Consumer Electronics Show? It's a great question and I think it's really important that uh, not just this show but any show all over the globe which is within scope, outside the scope of food and beverage really to draw inspiration and to draw um, and understand what trends are going to be we're going to be facing in the next several years ahead uh, in order for us to kind of use that as building blocks for new experiences that we innovate um, for the variety of brands and categories that we have um, and there's uh, it, it's just an exciting environment obviously this is the first where we've seen huge numbers here mm. um, and there's some really really good stuff I, I, I haven't been here for five years so I can see you know the the major difference in the technology. Well, and what would that? How's everything changed in that five years? And, and a, you know, compared to your last visit. Well, I think sustainability is screaming out, right? Mm -hmm. So that's across everything from devices across to yeah. personal kind of um, devices that you're wearing. Um, I was just in the Venetian this morning, uh, looking into uh, the smaller kind of startups and. You know, there's a, there's a huge amount of variety coming out, whether it be ingredients that um, are seen as substrates to um, existing proteins that are used in foods, or for that matter, any sort of digital therapeutics that you actually wear, um, which improves your environment, improves your mood. Uh, so there's a wide variety, but very, that digital health definitely coming through. That's great, so you, there's a lot of food here. Yes, food yeah, tech, food tech yeah. um, in, in one of the main halls and then um, you know, as I said underneath then it's lovely to see um, the countries and the, how they're, they're representing their startup communities yeah. um, um, and the diversity of it is just amazing. Yeah, the Eureka Park uh, in the Venetian yes. has been very special this year. Yes, see. and it's bustling, it's mm -hmm. bustling. Yeah. Um, so is, is there anything that you're going to take away or kind of you know, is there a trend that you're going to take away and think about over the next 12 to 24 months? Yeah, I think, you know, we'll have to digest everything. You know, um, we've got um, multiple people on the floor from different departments, which is always great where we can start to converge that data together. Um, you know how important data is. Uh, we will distribute that then to all departments. Um, and then we will um, use that effectively then for, you know, not just the existing priorities, but also reshape priorities for the future. Okay, so you bring it back and it uh, helps you kind of, uh, gives you a bit of a lens. I Absolutely, guess, yeah. yeah. And as you know, design and design led thinking is about the, the digestion of relevant information, foresights, um, and then being able then to resurrect them um, into what we see as plausible solutions going forward. Um, it allows us to create and, uh, and reinvent within categories we own. And for that matter, allows us to kind of push the envelope uh, in terms of new beverage and new food experiences that um, could be uh, fruitful islands outside of what we know. That's great, thanks so much, Phil. No problem. Hi, this is John Vesopoulos, CEO of Napster and former head of music at Roblox, giving you a quick overview of uh, my time at CES 2023. So uh, was very excited to get back to CES and be live and in person with uh, old friends and colleagues and uh, to meet new kind of partners, entrepreneurs, investors, etc. and to check out the latest in tech that Vegas had to offer. So um, it was a very productive week. I think in terms of trends, I sat on uh, a couple of panels, did a great podcast, and I think definitely the consumer trend that was coming out was uh, kind of the mainstreaming of the metaverse. So I think the first era of platforms being more of the major walled garden gaming platforms now 
seeing more adoption of the metaverse and Web3 with AR and and um, and uh, kind of metaverse integrations, uh, etc., becoming more integrated into consumer campaigns from brands and media companies and agencies. So I think 2023 will definitely have more of this mainstreaming of uh, adoption of this technology where the consumer won't be thinking and hearing buzzwords, uh, but they'll be hearing about things that add value with rewards and engagement and things that delight them from brands that they know and trust. Additionally, I think the trend is away from uh, high ticket price, investor driven uh, kind of NFTs to more, again, uh, mass market, low cost, low ARPU um, rewards and collectibles uh, from fans engaging with brands and and artists, etc., that they, they care about. So broadly, consumerization as the, the mainstream is uh, market is being tapped. Let's now turn to Marco Cavaglio. Marco, you are CEO, a co-founder of Head Office Space. It's going to be interesting to understand why you're here, why you came to CES and what you found. So what brings you to, to Vegas? We are here to unveil our partnership with Denso, Microsoft and LinkedIn. Okay. Where we're showing uh, the environment that we built for them mm -hmm. uh, in our metaverse. And our metaverse is the most advanced uh, operational system for metaverses on the cloud. So we can create productive spaces where you can meet, share, uh, Microsoft uh, 365 uh, files, work on a PowerPoint, yeah. an Excel, uh, meet your team, build a shop, anything you imagine, yeah. we can do it now. So what technologies are you looking for at CES? We are looking for all kinds of uh, XR related te technologies, yeah. everything from haptic gloves to uh, different kinds of headsets or other accessories that may be, that could be interesting for XR environments, right? Yeah. So things that could help connect digital and physical worlds. You know, where do you see the trends in your space? What's going to happen next? Well, we all know that the metaverse is not the next thing because it's already happening yeah. and it's going to just keep growing every year. So we believe every year there will be new wearables and new devices that will bridge this physical and digital world. And yeah, I, I, I can't wait to come back next year and see how much more we have evolved, right? And, and what other cool accessories people will come with to, to bridge that gap of physical and digital. That's great. I'm Marco Cavallo, CEO, co-founder of a head office space, great to uh, ha uh, have you here, nice. thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. So let's now turn to Simon Crownshaw. Simon, uh, you're, you run media entertainment at Microsoft, okay. yes? Yeah. Um, tell me, what brings you to CES? Well, uh, obviously Microsoft has a huge presence here. Yeah. Uh, we turn up every year. Um, I think uh, obviously on the Microsoft side, it's really more about gaming, you know, devices, automotive, the work mm -hmm. that we do. Um, but I think all up, I think it's a great experience um, and platform for companies to come together to demonstrate both enterprise and consumer-based technology. Um, and you're seeing so many new things start to appear. And I think for the first time, even for things like the metaverse or things of that nature, right? Augmented reality, AI, ML, everything, that kind of stuff. You're really seeing it become really mainstream for the first time. Mm -hmm. I think uh, it's everywhere. It's so pervasive. So I love coming to CES. The energy is amazing. Yeah. Right. I think uh, it's fun. I always talk to a lot of other folks about it. You know, it's, it's one of the more fun shows you get to come to, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's really about creativity. It's really about innovation. Yeah. Um, some things that you feel like, I saw that 10 years ago yeah. and it's still here, but nothing's really happened with it. And then new things that just appeared out of nowhere. Yeah. Um, so for me, it's, a, it's an amazing experience just to learn as much as anything else. Yeah, I mean, I think it's an interesting point. I think some of these ideas or concepts have been around like the smart kitchen or you know, smart home, digital kitchen and things. But it seems like everything's come back with a vengeance and come back as hyper connected. Right. And so a lot of the older ideas which were a little bit harder to use, harder to implement, or even on board as a customer, suddenly like everything seems to be far more seamless and slick. I think um, that was always the point, right? I mean, because for you, me, or anybody else, right? Mm -hmm. Those those ideas felt great, 
but they were so hard to use, right? Or they didn't feel connected to the rest of the way we would run our lives. Yeah. Um, I think what you're now seeing is that seamless connectivity that's really disappeared, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's partly to do with the way that modern technology infrastructure, cloud-based stuff really comes together. Yeah. Um, there's now really amazing ways to build websites and do technology or have infrastructure or do manufacturing, for example, that has really gone on a completely different scale, right? And mm -hmm. I think your point is incredibly valid, right? It's it was it felt hard 10 years ago yeah it doesn't feel hard now to do it right because all of that back-end stuff that was hard to understand mm -hmm. is now already there yeah that's great so any key trend that you're going to take away uh and think about and uh spin around your head in the next 12 24 months i so there's one thing that i think drives me uh, especially from my role in, in media entertainment right which is what is really going on with the way consumers want to experience brands or a service or a product and things of that nature? Right? Whether I'm in a car or I'm watching content on a TV, whatever else it might be, we are gone. We have gone from a world where content was great. You know, we all like to find good content, whether it be live broadcasts, whatever else it might be. But now it is an entirely new environment, mm -hmm. right? Whether I'm in my car, I, I saw some amazing cars while I was here. This sure, week, there's some shiny I'm, cars, right? But not just the performance of those cars, there's technology inside those cars, mm -hmm. right? They are, they're, they're like supercomputers mm -hmm. that you're driving around yeah. in. Um, and they're smart, they're for sustainability, they think about the environment, um, you know, they're autonomous to some degree, right? Yeah. And they have feeding data all over the place. Um, so that is amazing. And I think that really just speaks to the immersive nature of experiences that we're now all kind of yeah. seeing, right? Whether on our phone, on a device, we're now making it easier for people to be, see a kind of a blend of the physical and the digital mm -hmm. world together, mm -hmm. right? You see that with some things like the Denser Next Space that we've been talking about. Yeah. But you also see that, you know, like I said, in cars, you see that in the way that we're doing research and development, you see that with the way that enterprises are working, it's all about making that feel way more connected Yeah. and simple, right? I, I think, um, we can go back to what we talked about before, which was those things felt hard. Mm -hmm. They don't feel hard anymore, Yeah. right? It just needs to feel an important part and simple part of our lives that we can actually go and use when we want to use it. Yeah. When it becomes hard, adoption takes time, right? And yeah. that's what people are moving away from. Mm -hmm. Well, Sam Crownshaw, I really appreciate it. Thanks so much for coming. You're very welcome, my friend. Yeah. So now let's turn to Val Vacante. She is VP of Solutions and Innovation at Dentsu. Uh, wow, it's great to have you here. Um, what brings you to CES? So, well, first of all, CES is the global stage of innovation, and it's one of my favorite events of the entire year. So mm -hmm. it's great to be back. Um, but why we're here at the show is really to yeah. talk about our latest product and solution, Dentsu Next Space. Mm -hmm. And um, Dentsu Next Space, it's basically a collaboration with Microsoft, yeah. with LinkedIn, mm -hmm. and with head office space. Yeah. And you know, you probably more than anybody here knows that, you know, when it comes to metaverse, when it comes to web three, there's a lot of buzz and banter. Mm -hmm. A lot of brands don't really know how or where to start. Mm -hmm. um, and so we've created Dentsu Next Space as a way that we're actually you know, creating spaces that are meaningful. So mm -hmm. everything from um, learning and development. Mm -hmm. So we actually have a Dentsu Metaversity with Microsoft, where you can learn about Microsoft Retail um, in there, uh, Microsoft Viva skills in there, and then um, and then another area, which I think you and I've talked about before, is the virtual test labs, right? So we're actually able to work with a brand to mm -hmm. quickly and rapidly prototype ideas. And we have our own lab yeah. to be able to do that. It's a very lightweight to help make concepts tangible for brands yeah. before they sort of dive in. Mm -hmm. And then um, another big area, of course, is retail and commerce. Yeah. So creating those showroom experiences and amplified assistance. Yeah. And we're doing that not only with our Shop Next retail innovations, yeah. but also our AI-powered virtual ambassador. That's great. So when you hit the um, hit the CES floor, what are you looking for in terms of um, what have you seen that kind of inspires you uh, in terms of that work that you do? So what I'm really inspired about is, first of all, gaming, mm -hmm. because as we know. 
um, with Gen Z is kind of grown up gaming, having that behavior. So I always like to keep an eye on what's happening in the gaming space. Um, also in the sort of connected toy and tech, because mm -hmm. if you're looking at how kids are sort of playing, tinkering and interacting with tech, super simple experiences. Yeah. And we take that on board then we're already designing for yeah. brands of the future. Mm -hmm. um, and then of course, you know, what's happening, what's happening in hardware, what's happening in IOT, what's happening in wearables and how that's gonna influence XR as well. Yeah, is there anything you can go into in terms of like the wearable space and uh, what's, you know, what's inspiring you? So in terms of the wearable, for me, it's the super simple experiences. Mm -hmm. You know, I think when we think about um, say seven years ago yeah everybody was sorry wearing this like big hardware and yeah. you know quantified cells and everything and so i think apple's done a great job with apple watch and having that software experience and brands who are similarly creating those simple experience that integrate into your everyday life yeah exactly i've seen i think i saw um a very heavy vr kit uh at, on this show floor and i was thinking that's not the way forward where someone's got to strap on a massive power generator to, to enjoy VR. Um, what sort of trends are you gonna take away uh, from this show? What, what's going to kind of inspire you over the next 12, 24 months? For me, it's really simple experiences. Mm -hmm. So how technology can really enable every facet of your life, right? So if you're into fitness, what's gonna be just make your fitness better? You know what's going to make your life easier and I, I it's it's like such a simple answer but just like that example you said a moment ago like wearing the big suit mm -hmm. you know simple is hard yeah. and so technologies that really um, amplify the experience assist experiences that's what, no matter what category that's what we need to be paying attention that's to that's great I'm going to look forward to that Val Vacante, Dentsu, I really appreciate your time today. Thanks for having me, Pierce. Yeah. What brings me to CES is a pretty long history. I fell in love with the show the first time I ever saw it. I was the editor of PC Magazine and publishing at the time. And then I had a conversation with Gary Shapiro where I said, I think I can help you tell stories about this show and build areas like digital health and digital money and high-tech retailing so that people felt they were family when they saw each other every year. Fast forward, I did that for 15 years. Now CTA, the CES parent, owns the company. I've gone on to do other things, but I still consult here every year and I'm so grateful because everything I predicted has come true. CES is like seeing your family friends again and growing up with technology together. So the biggest trends, trend number one, amazing we got anything done. Let's remember during the pandemic, no two engineers sat together. They were shipping parts back and forth in FedEx. The fact that anything works is amazing. But part two, the innovation is so great. And it's very practical oriented, unlike a lot of years when there've been real flying cars and saucers. There's, you know, mow my house with a robotic mower. There's take care of the energies, there's sustainability, there's solar, um, there's food scarcity issues that are being addressed with technology that are so useful, helpful, and gratifying for the planet and for us. So I think for the last two years, we've seen a real boon in very practical oriented technology. Okay, so the future, it's always hard to predict and you're always wrong, but I can tell you AI is in it in a big way. Generative AI is probably the subtle murmur all through the show. You will be, if you're in advertising, the copy will be created in generative AI. If you do, if you're in graphics, you know that it's replacing art. If you're in writing, it's only the beginning. It will diagnose what's wrong with the machine you're trying to fix. It will figure out your supply chain. So think of it like anything you ever searched for before. It will make that um, so much richer. And that is going to ask us all what we should be doing when AI and robots and all really come to fruition. So you're seeing a lot of people talking about job training and retraining, reskilling. We will always be the inspiration, but 
this is the year of AI, and clearly you're seeing the beginning of the metaverse, which will happen, but it's going to take a while. So next let's speak to Paul Veltman. Paul, you are part of Growth Enablement, and you're leading this Dentsu Next uh, space project, yeah? That's right. At yeah. Dentsu, yeah? yeah. Um, and you're in from Australia, yeah? So what brings you all the way to CES? It's a good, it's a good question. Um, so flew in Sunday. Uh, it's been a big build up to launch Dentsu Next Space, that's why we're here. Mm -hmm. uh, but also, you know, to get in and meet with uh, our partners, you know, Microsoft uh, and LinkedIn. Uh, but essentially we came out for this, but also just to take part in, you know, this awesome show. That's great. So uh, from the conversations you've had with your partners and everybody else, kind of what's the buzz? Yeah, I think, you know, obviously we, we're here for a, for a purpose, but, you know, the there's a lot of innovation uh, that's been kind of held back for a long time. And it's great to see some of the latest and greatest stuff come to the floor. I think obviously Web3, uh, you know, a big talk on the metaverse uh, and, you know, how different individuals are tackling that. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's obviously, you know, just generally there's a lot of uh, focus on, you know, coming into 2023 uh, and what that looks like and who's going to come to the forefront. but. The, the rapid change you're seeing with all, within all the different products uh, and services coming to market. But I think the most exciting for us is obviously what we're doing here with Dentsu Next Space um, and the conversations, and I think even whilst we've been here, has evolved what we're now planning to do. Um, so yeah. That's great, so let's just dive into that. Like what trend or what themes are you gonna take from this, these conversations and what you've seen on the floor? and kind of build into kind of work like Dentsu Next Space? Yeah, I think, look, um, one thing I've realized is collaboration uh, is, is so important, but all the different uh, talents and skill sets that are now coming through mm -hmm. within this space, you know, what we built is built on Unreal 5 Engine, it's 5.1 just got released. So the skill sets that are acquired and the different people that we've been able to meet here to take us to that next level mm -hmm. um, uh, is super important. But then, you know, I, I'd say also just within the, the partnership, yeah. you know, of, uh, with Microsoft and LinkedIn, um, I think that we've been able to meet with a number of individuals we wouldn't have, right? You can only do so much, uh, you know, over a screen. Getting together uh, has now accelerated the next step on this. Uh, and there's some really exciting use cases around, you know, learning, uh, recruitment, uh, through to collaboration tools. Um, you know, and, and there's some, some great uh, you know, clients and brands that we met with, uh, how we're gonna start extending experiences for the retail environment too. That's great, I mean, Paul, um, it's been great to speak to you and to be one of our last people we will speak to because um, not only can it help our audience and not only understand what technologies um, they can take and the themes they can take and what's gonna emerge, but also the value of this show and oh, why yeah. people are here and why they should come next year that's right and be part of it yeah yeah uh, absolutely i think yesterday we had close to a couple of hundred people through this room right and it's not a big room yeah. uh we had we had 40 of the japanese press in at one time at one point i don't know where they will sit with a translator but um i think that that's the biggest takeaway that we need to be doing more of this stuff uh we need to make an effort to uh, mm -hmm. and absolutely use it as a point of connection but also to, to rapidly collaborate and evolve you know the things that like what we're doing here um you know i think we've probably what we've achieved here in this one you know in five days would have taken months so mm -hmm. big difference yeah i hope you all enjoyed that those conversations uh, varied, different, but I think everyone showed a lot of excitement about this show. Hopefully next year you can come and join me and the crew and um, sit and get the value that you have from not only kind of seeing technology on the show floor, but the conversations around it are even more important and uh, amplify uh, the opportunities that we can uh, have uh, as a result of everything that's happening here. Till next time, this is Piers of PSFK.